Welcome to the new series of microservice. In this series, I am going to talk about uh, how microservice, how to secure a microservice. Like I will be talking about authentication and authorization in various ways. We have many ways to secure a microservice. Uh, how we have many ways to handle authentication and authorization. So in this series, I am going to talk about uh, some few ways how we can uh, secure a microservice and how we can handle the authentication and authorization with key clock okay so in this first video I am going to give a hands-on on on the first way and on the subsequent videos I will be explaining on the other ways okay so let's check the number of ways how we can do it okay now see the number of ways how we can secure a microservice and this is the first way like uh, suppose you have a microservice and inside the microservice you have implemented uh, spring security and uh, you have done the coding yourself like uh, whether you want to read the ream roles or you want to read the client uh, rules and all uh, what link you oh, what are the urls you want to exclude uh, or you want to allow or what what all the uh, URLs you want to uh, uh, mean like it need to be authenticated so this is the first way and here uh, each micro if you are if you are uh, having some many microservice in this way you, uh, on each microservice you need to write the same uh, piece of code so this is the first way and uh, this is the first way I will be explaining in this uh, uh, say uh, in the video and on the subsequent video I will be explaining the rest of the methods and let's check the second uh, method okay so here uh, we'll make a separate security library and uh, we'll make a jar or uh, like a security jar kind of thing and on the each microservice we'll uh, use that jar so in this way what happens is on the on each microservice you don't need to write the same piece of code and the say and the common piece of code we need we can write it uh, write it on the security library and we can uh, achieve the same thing uh, whatever we want to do with some customization okay and this is a second uh, way now let's check the third way and uh, okay so this is all about uh, uh, this is example in terms of Kubernetes so here we can see the uh, the security library would uh, whatever we have prepared means it is running as a sidecar along with the microservice so this is the pod yellow is the pod and uh, here this is a microservice container and along with it the security container is running so any request which is routed uh, which is trying to access any URL from this microservice uh, will go from this security container um, it's it's a we can say it is a proxy it's like uh, for the for the thing and proxy is handling the security thing okay and this is one of the way we can handle uh, uh, microservice security okay and this is another way where we can we don't need to write a code it's like uh, and uh, suppose we are we need to only concentrate on the business logic like a uh, plain microservice we have created with some list of uh, uh, APIs and all and we will use the Istio authorization policy that that is called uh, envoy proxy okay and the Istio authorization policy will handle the authentication and authorization for your microservice okay and this is one of the way how we handle uh, microservice security okay and uh, this is one of the way uh, where authentication like let's suppose we have a api gateway so api gateway can be anything like a uh, uh, netflix zool or spring cloud gateway or we are using kong or or any other uh, gateway so on the gateway level we handle the authorization and authentication okay and microservice uh, uh, will be behind the gateway and uh, this is one of the way uh, how we handle uh, authentication and uh, authorization now uh, let's check the first way 
uh, the hands on means like uh, i will as i have mentioned uh, previously uh, in the video that uh, i will be explaining the first way and on the subsequent videos i will be explaining the rest of the ways uh, as discussed okay now let's check the first way okay uh, before jumping it to the code let me show you my key, key clock environment uh, very quickly so this is the customer is the ream okay and i have created couple of clients the first one is demo client which is a confidential client with a direct access grant and service account enable okay and uh, the direct access client is not mandatory okay and uh, and it has some role role customer read role customer right so these are ream roles okay client scope is uh, not so same and this is not so important okay next i go to demo client so this is this is a demo client okay and here it doesn't have any roles client scope is nothing and service account on the service account i have mapped a role customer right and role customer read i have uh, mapped these two roles here okay and this is my uh, environment now let me show you the code okay the code is simple uh, i have an api like a customer which uh, pre authorized i have used and and it need a role customer read and uh, it is a simple return type okay and uh, this is a post map mapping which which require role cus uh, customer right okay and this is unsecured uh, one api v2 customer okay and uh, here this is main class nothing it uh, special so this is the security configuration so this is the main class so this is the classes i was telling uh, like each everyone need to do uh, you know every microservice need to be done so let me show you the application properties and application properties we have to map the uh, give the issuer url so this is the issuer url application client is the demo client like uh, i uh, this for this microservice the demo client is the client where all the uh, re, uh, client specific roles are created so that's why we have to add it here i will explain uh, where it is used okay so here the issuer url we are reading it client name we are reading it on the filter chain uh, these are very standard things like for each request it need to be authorized okay and this is the issuer url jwt dot decode and jwt custom authentication converter and this is the session part uh, jwt custom authentication converter we can see it here jwt uh, authentication converter and uh, for this we are setting our own converter so this is nothing but a custom uh, jwt converter and uh, this is for course and this is the file okay and this is the file here we are passing the client name okay the client name is the demo client and uh, here we are adding the ream roles as well as the client roles so two methods i've uh, created so here we are getting from the map from the roles uh, map and we are adding it to the final roles okay and the final roles is nothing but uh, this is the object okay this is the collection and this is the client role okay and this is the client role and uh, from the resource access we need to get it i will show you uh, the jwt token also how it looks like and uh, how these methods are being used from the resource access uh, we are getting a map and inside resource access we need to get from that specific client and uh, this is the hierarchy from this again we are getting the roles and the roles finally we are uh, 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 moving all the roles to this uh, object okay and here we are returning it and this is uh, the two files uh, with this uh, security uh, can be handled okay and nothing uh, we need to do build.gradle uh, is you can see spring boot security 
OAuth 2 resource server and these are the things uh, I have used so don't worry I will check in the code uh, on my github and anybody can download and uh, use it okay and now this is running and now we will see uh, uh, from the postman uh, how uh, things are working okay now let's check the API from the postman how it works okay and here one thing uh, I want you to notice is uh, in the this is a demo client and uh, for this microservice uh, we have created a demo, demo client and inside the demo client we have created some uh, client specific rules and now if anybody wants to call the API I need that rules to be present on the JWT token okay and that's why uh, here I want to show you again that inside demo demo client I have mapped these roles okay and uh, like anybody can create any any client or it's like a different microservice let's suppose we have a, a different microservice called department and department wants to call a customer microservice so what a department microservice will do is he will create a client like for example a demo okay and he will map the demo client roles to it like whatever access he needs okay and now let's open the uh, postman and see okay and here we can see uh, we are generating a token with client credential and demo and this is a client secret these are standard things we have created uh, the token we are copying it and let's call the first API and uh, API v1 customer we have seen it here API v1 customer it needs to uh, it is authenticated it needs a role customer read okay let's see we are getting unauthorized okay and now let's uh, give the bearer token okay and we can see here it is uh, it is able to access uh, the API and if I remove this uh, uh, read API from the uh, from here if I let's suppose I unassigned it and uh, now I will try to get a token again and now we will see it will not work as expected here we can see we are getting 403 okay and uh, this these are the ways uh, how we can uh, secure our microservice and uh, with the uh, role based access okay and uh, let me show you uh, and this is a post request it, it will work as it is okay and uh, API v2 customer API v2 customer this is unsecured okay and API v2 customer and I am removing no auth okay and here you can see without any access token it is working okay and uh, this is how we can uh, secure our microservice we can make it a uh, role based access your uh, API uh, with the help of uh, key clock and we can see this code is very simple but only the disadvantage is this uh, this this piece of code uh, every microservice need to write it and like for example in the security configuration I'm again uh, showing you here suppose the unsecured API uh, we need to write it uh, here okay and this type of uh, some common code uh, uh, this type of like a uh, code every microservice need to write and this is one of the disadvantage of uh, uh, this way okay and and in the next video I will coming up with uh, the common approach where uh, we'll create a security library and we'll use the security library as a jar uh, from the build.xml we will uh, include it here right, like as a dependency and uh, we'll use the same way and we'll also use uh, uh, like uh, if you want to allow some URLs so that also uh, we will do it okay and uh, with this I am ending my uh, this video and uh, please do 
share and like if you like the content and uh, stay tuned for the next uh, videos uh, thank you thank you for watching